morning, good evening, good afternoon. A lot of things been going on lately. Pictures coming out of Russia of a black Jesus, black Madonna, and all this other stuff. We got a lot of things showing on social media and other places. We're talking about all these cities that was here before uh, we came here and stuff like that. All that architecture and stuff. It's a lot of truth. And people, I'm going to tell you something. We've been lied to. Whose structures are those that you built off the top of? I'm just really curious. You know, if they lived in teepees, who was living in these buildings, huh? Those columns don't look like they're of Edom. We all know what Edom's columns look like, the Roman columns. We know what they look like, and those aren't your columns. So, whose buildings were those? As you can tell in the far right, all the way over there in the far right, they dug all of that up right there. They dug it up. Look at the door in the front right there. It's a door right there. Oh, was it steps there? No, it's more building and windows. So it was covered. Hmm. Windows, a door, windows. It's covered. Hmm. Looks like you built off the top of that structure. And I had to put this picture in here for some people who just don't understand what I'm talking about. It's covered. You know, that's a whole entire building. It's covered. Who did they tell y'all built the White House? I'm sure they built the Capitals too. But whose building did you build off the top of? Somebody lying somewhere. These are columns of Edom. We definitely know what your columns look like. It's not hard to figure out. It's so much history that these people aren't talking about. They don't want to mention. And they say, you guys didn't contribute to society. <laughs> Funny. We all know what building that is, don't we? Is that a building under it? Is that a building under the Capitol? Hmm. Clearly you can tell that they built off the structures because there's doors and windows in the ground. Halfway shown. Hmm. Here's a better picture of that first picture that I showed. I think it was the first picture. But I said there was like a wall back there showing that they were digging it up. Means there's structures under the mud. Whose structures were those? My question is, did they have the mud flood because they were flooding out these black towns? You don't have any proof. <laughs> We've been lied to, okay? And I'm going to get into something that's very important for my audience because you need to know what's going on and what you need to know what's going on with all these pictures that's coming out of a black Jesus, etc. Okay? Because they're... they're you know, the cabal and all this other stuff, they're running for the hills. They don't know what to do because there's certain things happening in this world right now that the regular, they have no answers to. And you need to understand what God is doing. Now, let's deal with this. Why now say Jesus is black? Why now say Jesus is black? For almost 200 years, they've been keeping that, that narrative of, uh, and whitewashing Jesus and etc. And you have to always go back to how we've been teaching things. Go back to Ptolemy time and how Ptolemy they invented Serapis and then later the Romans invented Mitra and then later they invented Yahshua. You see what I'm saying? And then later they brought in the, the Louis, the Sun King, the Louis in the French bloodline. So you got a lot of things been going on and in between that they, they brought you from in the uh, 1700s and etc. 16, 1700s they brought you a, a whitewashed Jesus 
okay, certain parts of Europe, your Western world, and then they brought you, uh, later now, they're trying to reverse it and bring you a black Jesus like that going to change white people's attitude or, or Eurocentric attitude of the economic system attitude towards you, okay? That's just going to get a few people to say, well, okay, I, I, I knew it was there's something to it long ago and all that other nonsense. But what you need to do, you need to see. There's a reason why things happening and I want to bring certain reasons out. Okay. Why now say Jesus is black? Why now say Jesus is black? 2024 to 2042. Let's deal with Matthews. Matthews 24, 24, 4 to 5. Take heed, thought. Take heed, thought. No man deceive you. Take heed. I thought it's saying this. They put it under Jesus because what? The initials know that if you put stuff under Jesus, the mass of the people are going to listen to it more. And that's what they do. A lot of prophecies is under Jesus. A lot of ideology that you can pick up is under Jesus. And the initials know exactly what they was doing. Now, let's go on. Because they say, they'll tell you, Jesus never wrote anything. Jesus didn't even exist back 2,000 years ago. But they want to put that narrative in your head. I, I like for you on your uh, spare time, look at the uh, uh, documentary they call uh, 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 call uh, Caesar the Messiah. You need to watch that. Now I'm going along with everything that the guys say, but some of the stuff make a lot of sense and it show how that narrative was brought forth to you. Now, okay, take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5, for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. Now the initiate got this under what you would call Jesus and it's literal. You got to look at it. It's literal. It's got to be translated. Now it's literal. And what is this initiate trying to say to you? That they're going to come at that time of this narrative of, 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 of Jesus back in that time going to say he is Christ and they shall deceive you because Christ ain't came yet because you got to know the ox. See, the initiates know the ox. When they look at the ox and they look at the possession of the equinox, they know that that dark age is the age that uh, that the devil posed a rule for 6,000 plus years. So they know that ain't no way he was going to come at, the age, at that age of Pisces. They knew that. Okay. So you had Taurus. You had Aries and Pisces, and they know he supposed to come at the end of Pisces. That's why you hear the hear the Jesus say when the disciples, as the story go, the narrative go, the disciples as when by the upper room and, and et cetera, et cetera, he say go to the man in the pitcher of water, and he talk about the upper room. That means that upper part, that area in the possession of the equinox, that upper part when you are coming out of Pisces into Aquarius. That's what they mean by that upper room. And you'll meet a man with a pitcher of water that's telling you about Aquarius. And see, these things have to be known. And you ain't going to know this by just reading this book. You got to know it by studying and knowing that the arts are in this book. And that's how you translate it through knowing the arts. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, uh, cognitive dissonance. 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 Cognitive dissonance. Okay, what is that? is a psychological phenomena that occur when a person holds two contradictory belief at the same time. Now, why would I say that? Because what they done did, they done put you in that state of mind. Now, you done know, grown up in the church, and you done seen the white Jesus every time I come out of the <laughs> YMCA, I go there to do exercise, etc. When I come out of the YMCA, the first thing I see before I walk out them double doors, slide double doors, on that left hand side, that picture of Jesus over there on the wall. They keep that picture of that white Jesus on that wall. They keep you in a subliminal sense, understanding that, that white supremacy rule. Now, that may not be total all day intense, but it still send that same message. Your God is white because they made Jesus a God, not just the Father. They made the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost a white, Eurocentric man. Okay. Now, now I'm not against Caucasian, but I'm against I'm, I'm for truth. Don't put that crap up there. Don't put no white Jesus up there. Don't put no black Jesus up there. 
okay, on me because I don't want to go for it, okay. I don't want to hear that stuff that they talking about and now I, I knew how I grew up and etc. But God have educated me to that point where I don't want to hear the nonsense, okay. But yeah, at the same time, let's move on, okay. Isaiah 41, 25 and 27. I have raised up one from the north and he shall come. From the rising of the sun shall he call upon my name. And he shall come upon princes and upon mortal, mortal, that means the icons, and, and as the potter thread of clay. Okay. Now, 26. Who have declared from, from the beginning thought? Who have declared from the beginning thought? Okay. Now, I don't want to go no further than that right now. I'm going to stop right there before I go any further. Now, you never, they never brought you no Jesus in person. They brought you statues. They brought you a, 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 a princess, a, well known as a prince, prince of peace. They have brought you these things in, 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 in relics, you know, that the, that the portal, that the uh, person who's shaping these things and building these, these things present to you, okay? When you see Jesus, you see him in a picture painting, or you see him in a statue, or you see him in other icons. It ain't just Jesus, or other religion, other people have their, their Buddha, and they have all this other stuff. But all this stuff is made up with man's hand, okay? These statues and things, moral, they made up with man's hand, okay? Clay and all that, they made up with man's hand. And it's saying that, and so, Ain't nobody brought you no Jesus from the past and say, oh, this is Jesus. Jesus, introduce yourself to these people. No, they didn't. Uh -uh, not at all. Okay? But they have brought you statues. Okay? And all these other things. They have brought you that. And the scripture saying that that's what they brought you. And, he, and, and the person who's coming that's telling you about thought, he's against that. He's not going to be, he gonna, I remember when God gave me a vision of that, this stuff, tearing down these some crosses and all this other stuff. And, and not only that, the stopping, uh, uh, the, the killing of these babies in these dumpsters and the murdering of, of babies before they come out the mother wounds. Now I've seen all that kind of stuff. God ain't about none of that. And this evil generation because. Or permit that stuff to occur. And we have to understand that God ain't with that. Okay? From the rising of the sun, saying they're coming from the rising of the sun. Now you can see this in two ways. This is why our symbolism is the rising of the sun. Why is the rising of the sun? Because of the time you're in. You're in that area in Aquarius. As this uh, in this procession of the equinox, we come out this dark age. You're in the rising of the sun, and Sirius is here, and Sirius is shining that light on our planet. So you are getting, you are being more abundant. You're getting more abundant knowledge and stuff. You you in that age where it say unity with equality, unity and integrity, and and you are in that age where you ain't going for anything. So you left out of that Pisces age, that age of deception. Now you. In this new age, the age of awareness or awakening age, and you need to see that. It's very, very important to see that. Let's go into 26. 26. Isaiah 41, 26. Who have declared from the beginning thought? Who, declared, who, who told you about thought? Now he's in the book now. He's in the book. And in the Renaissance time, in the 15, 1600s, uh, uh, Hermes, who was thought, was taught. But lately, who have declared that? They done took that away from you because they don't want you to know the truth. They hide the truth from you. They don't want you to know these truths. Who have declared from the beginning thought? We may know. Ain't nobody told Christian, Christianity now ain't talking about no thought that is right in the book. They ain't talking about no arts in the book. They don't even use that word art as art. They be saying like, art thy king so-and-so. And all this other stuff. It ain't art. A-R-T. Art. Even if you go get a Bible dictionary, you cannot even find them talk about A-R-T as an art. Something that you need to learn. Gnosis. Etc. They don't even show it like that. Okay? And before time. Okay? Beginning thought. We may know. And before time. Before time. Thought. 
we may say, we may say, verse 27, the first shall say to Zion, which is Lewis, behold, behold them, and I will give to, I will give to Jerusalem, Lewis, Jerome, I'm sorry, I will give to Jerusalem one thought, being, listen to this, being Good times. Now what it say? Let's go, let's go Jerusalem. Louis Strong's one. One thought. Being good time. In other words, what's gonna happen at this time when thought presents itself to Jerusalem, a thought presents itself to Zion, a thought presents itself to his messenger, he's gonna bring good tidings. What is the good tidings? He gonna let you go from this. He finna deliver you. He finna bring you in another consciousness. He finna present another narrative to you. So what they have done, what the European world will is, is the uh, uh, Western Europe or Eastern Europe. They have all lied to you. They have made this narrative and created this Sarapos type Jesus and they have presented it to you and God don't want that no more. God wants you away from that. He wants you to see him. He wants you to see gold tax back to your fathers. See, thought is tied up with your fathers. He's known as the God of the God. And you got to see that. God the Almighty created him. The pyramids and stuff was shaped and created by him. See, white Eurocentric, they still lying. We don't know who created the pyramid. We, we, it could have been some alien. I can't see no human doing this. See, they, they look, it's like that. They are never going to give you credit for who you are because they got to share. And they ain't planning on sharing nothing with you. Okay? They want you to be their servant. And they want to be your masters because they know in time past you have rule over them, even in Europe. And that's what they are afraid of. Giving you an opportunity or giving you the truth that you could be able to rule over them. Instead of thinking that you'll rule with them, they want they think that you're going to rule over them because all the hell they done took you through. And you need to see that. Let's move on. Exodus, Exodus 3, 7 to 12. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction, the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, which is America. America is the old Egypt. That's what America is. The old Egypt. Pyramids are all over this place. North and South and Central America. And have heard their cry. By reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. Now, what is happening? What have happened to you? The people that came over here and took your land, warred against your, your, your people, the natives as they call Indians, don't tell who they really are. Pass laws in Virginia and elsewhere where you couldn't even identify people of color. You had to be people of color. You couldn't identify yourself as natives of the land. And a lot of things they did for you, discredited you, et cetera, et cetera, took your cities, your cities that you lived in, and told humanity you came from Africa. And then had the taskmasters to help back it up by some of them saying you are African American. Or uh, then other ones, you listen to the other ones now, they still got that thought or uh, that same philosophy of uh, you from Africa. Some of your leaders of uh, uh, the, the diaspora, you from Africa, or uh, we came from Africa and stuff, trying to still push that narrative. But they are your leaders now. They are your leaders. Because they won't give, turn it loose because they've been getting paid for saying that like that. And you look where, where did it start sprouting up? When did it start sprouting up? At the same time, the AME church came. Why? Because it's about the, the uh, Methodist, African Methodist Episcopalian church. That's where that AME come from, Africa. Methodist. Because they, want, they, they wanted that narrative, so they let those blacks start pushing it. Now, I'm not personally against the AME church, but I'm telling you about history. 
I'm telling you about history during the time of Allen. That was during the time, at that time was the time of a jubilee. You got to watch the jubilees now, the Jewish jubilees. Because if you watch the Jewish jubilees, you'll see all these, what they call important uh, individuals in history, blacks in history, come on the scene. Even Martin Luther King, even Marcus Garvey, even Booker T. Washington. So you got to see this stuff because if you don't know the arts, you don't know how God is dealing with this nation. You got to understand this. So these taskmasters who came at different times because they now don't get me wrong. They meant well, they just want to do for their people. And they had to use the white man in order to do for their people and the white man manipulated them. That's why they're known as the taskmasters. They're from different fraternities, etc. Especially when Marcus Garvey came on the scene, you start seeing black fraternities branch up everywhere. Some of them came connected to the bones and skulls, etc. Because of what he was trying to do. He was trying to resurrect the common people to make them think they were somebody. And they wanted the elite blacks to be known only as somebody. Who is Marcus God? He come from the island, one of the islands. He ain't got no business trying to lead this mass of people. <laughs> and all this. And some of these guys, some of these guys, and no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not about blind and white in that way, but some of these guys that, that would lead black people and trying to lead black people, some of them ain't all black. You got black folks that daddies are white, or other people in their family are white, which make them partially white, and the several. Why would you mix your blood with the black people, yeah. and yet deprive them of equal justice? Yeah. Talk to them. That's the thing. If you so mighty and so wise, why did not you build and construct your own government and country and leave us alone? Thing but labor. Yeah. Why should not we want some of this earth yeah. where we can start building a government for the future of our people? Yes, sir. So that they won't be a subject people for just labor, labor, year after year for another people. Right. And in all of that, laboring and submissive to the will of that nation, they still are subject to the most brutal treatment that human beings can ever be subject to. So you got to start looking at this thing a little bit bigger than what you've been watching because genes play a part, a very important part of leadership. Look at Booker T. Washington. Look at some of the other ones and see how their bloodline is. You know, people don't like to talk about that, but I'm gonna talk about it. Look at look at Barack Obama, look at his bloodline. Now his bloodline said that his dad come from Africa, Kenya, or something like that. And his mama was American. You know. But at times when you need in black folks, I don't care who you're married to, I don't care about who you are. You can marry who you want to marry. I don't care what that, but who you are, you know. Do you have that vibration and frequency in you that connect with the fathers? That that frequency goes back into your bloodline and it's telling you Kente. It's telling you uh, 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 from certain Indian bloodline, Chief Indian bloodline, Armstrong. You know, Creek, Cherokee, Armstrong. Is it telling you that you got the blood to help resurrect this Hebrew people? Because some people, they talking liberation and all this, but they ain't doing nothing. They just talking. Just like a poodle in a fence. He's just barking. When you step in that fence, he don't say too much. And you got to understand that. And we'll go on because our taskmasters, you got to start understanding these taskmasters now. Because these taskmasters, the media and the Eurocentric man, he's going to put them out front. He's going to put them out front. And I, I, I like the uh, people like Martin Luther King. But Martin Luther King, he came to a conclusion, he admitted, and he was one of the ones 
them bootleg Negroes, he admitted, man, this is as though I brought my people into a burning house. Because he realized, wait a minute, we giving up a lot, but we ain't getting nothing. You know, they taking our resources, they taking our economic strength away from us. And they doing it even today. And we got to say, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay? Let's move on. Okay? Uh, verse 8. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian, that means the Americans, and to bring them up out of, out of, okay? Then they're going to say, thought, to bring them up out of. And who is this going to bring them up out of it? Thought, thought is going to bring them up out of it. And who do he do? He uses messengers and others. The ones that he have said he's going to use in order to bring them out of the condition. Okay? Now, it is say, and to bring them up out of, in thought, land unto a, out of that, land unto a good land and a large, unto a land formed with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites. Oh Lord, the place of the Canaanites and the Amorites. Okay, now what do we mean by the Camorites? The Canaanites. Now you got to go study because I said this book is about America. So what area did historically that one of the governors, uh, one from a different culture, because you ain't finding nothing from the England, from England, but the different cultures tell you. That there was Canaanites on this land. Now you got to do your homework now. Because we keep reading that letter. That the governor that ruled over in this area. He ruled Florida up the Mississippi. And he wrote back to the crown. And told the crown that there was Canaanites on this land. Mr. Parkman rightly says that the spirit of Spanish enterprise in America is expressed in the following address of Dr. Pedro de Santander to the king in 1557 of the expedition of the Soto. It is lawful that your majesty, like a good shepherd appointed by the hand of the eternal father, should tend and lead out your sheep since the Holy Spirit has shown spreading pastures whereon a feeding lost sheep, which have been snatched away by the dragon. The demon. These pastures are the new world wherein is comprised Florida, now in possession of the demon. And here he makes himself adored and revered. This is the land of promise possessed by idolaters, the Amorite, Amalekite, Moabite, Canaanite. This is the land promised by the eternal father to the faithful, since we are commanded by God in the holy scriptures to take it from them, being idolaters, and by reason of their idolatry and sin, to put them all to the night, leaving no living thing, save maidens and children, their cities robbed and sacked, their walls and houses leveled to the earth. In the area of Florida, in up the Mississippi, Canada! And see, you got to know, well, who is the Canaanite? Go flip your pages and find out biblically who was known as the Canaanites. Those were Lot people. And who is Lot? Lot was one of the ones in the family of Abraham, in that family. But see, they ain't telling you that, that Canaanites was on this land because the Vatican don't want the history of black people known. That during the reconstruction period after the Civil War, the Vatican put out an edict very quietly that all Western books and academia had to first be uh, passed through the Vatican census. So the Vatican said that any evidence of black history here had to be taken off of the history book. This man, Ko, who essentially became the, 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 the top man that you went to see about Mesoamerican civilization, he worked for the CIA. Because he knows that you are the true Hebrews, you are the true peoples of God, those chosen people. And the Vatican knows that if they're going to keep its power base and keep things going, he got to keep that hidden from you. 
of the power. The Catholic is the major power influence in the world from Rome. And they know that Rome eventually is going to fall and they got to be able to control this land. So if Rome fall and, 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 and that, that land be destroyed, then where do you think they want to set their base up? Right over in this area of the Fertile Crescent, where it all started from. We thought left from this area and went over to Africa and started that, that he started over there about building the pyramid and all that other, what he called the Harry Barbarians. Okay? And see, but they don't want you to know that. Even the Hopi Indians, I said, we was here before the moon came. What did that mean? They've been on this land for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Hundreds of thousands of years. But they, they ain't gonna paint you that narrative. They gonna paint you that narrative. Oh, 6,000 years ago, man came from the gorilla, the ape, and all that, and the Darwin theory, and he became who we are now. Not telling you that these people have been more advanced and all that way before the pyramid had been been built over 72 years ago, or the Sphinx was over 72 years ago. Scientists see the weathering of the Sphinx and know that, hey, this said to take thousands and thousands of years for it to get like that, and etc. But see, that's not the narrative that the Egyptologists want you to know because they are controlled and the Catholic Church created the Egyptologists. And you got to see that now. You got to wake up to this knowledge. Because I'm not here to lie to you. Check me. Prove me wrong. I come with the spirit of truth. Prove me wrong. If you don't want to believe me, I ain't telling you about just, just believe. See, that's the problem in the past. Just believe. Just believe that Jesus came and died for the sins of the world. Just believe. And the Jesus character and the mayor character come out of ancient Egypt. At the time, they talk about Osiris and Isis and Horus. That's where that, that mythology come from. That's where that narrative come from. But they asking you, just believe. Well, I see Jesus was before. That character was before that Jesus. You be, Oh, that's the devil. You can't believe that. That's the devil. Oh, the Egyptian. Oh, the Egyptian. They idol people. They ain't, you know, all this nonsense. Come on, people. Come on now, you got to wake up to the truth. Let's move on now. Exodus 3, 13 to 14. And Moses, what did Moses represent? Messiah. That's what Moses represented, Messiah. So what is they talking about? In the book written about America in this time, they're talking about the Messiah. And what we've been telling you, the Messiah, the Prince, supposed to come. That's what is in Daniel. Daniel tell you, seven, seven weeks or seven years or 360 days of the year when they orchestrate this uh, Israel over there in Palestine 2,520 years, something like that, how it go. You can calculate and make sure it's correct. Just take 360 times a uh, 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 7 and it'll give you the date. Add the date. Add the date. November 29, 1947. Add that date and go all the way. Draw your chart and go all the way to the end of that 360 days times seven, and then we give you October the 22nd, 1954. The date of the birth of the Messiah, the Prince. See, it's there. It's there. And then when he's supposed to come forth, he's supposed to come forth two, two score and two years. And so, when you add that up, that's 62, that takes you to to October of uh, 2016. Now also you got to go with his name because his name is in there. In Daniel 9 25. And it say, make Jerusalem into, not unto, into the Messiah the Prince. Now you got to dig his name out because his name is in Jerusalem. See, these arts don't lie. But they're not telling you none of this. None of this is they telling you. 
So how could they set up the thing so you could be delivered when you have to build a kingdom here on earth? How could they set it up when they don't know God's will? They don't know how to interpret the book. And you got to wake up to this, people. You got to wake up to this. See, some of you, when y'all eating all this meat all the time, your vibration and your frequency ain't working properly. And so sometimes you hear me talking something and you don't really, it don't resonate with you. You gotta wake up, my people. This is not the time to be playing around. People talk about, well, the solo clip. What did I say last week? I got purposely put a video out to tell you when they talk about, oh, we may have three days of darkness. Y'all better do this and do that. And we, I say, ain't nothing gonna happen. Nothing gonna happen. Because it ain't about that day as much as it's about the year, next two years to come, where you're gonna have war. But you don't have to have war. But they showed you and they're going to show you a, a movie about the Civil War and they just showed you one about a World War. Because they want you, they need you to think like that. So they can paint that narrative in your mind so you can make it come to play. And they can utilize that to make their next moves. Ever wonder why the powers that be always broadcast what they're going to do before they do it? It's not to avoid karma. That's not how karma works. The reason is because the powers that be are archons. Archons were spoken about in the ancient Gnostic texts. Archons are thought forms that cannot manifest on their own because they have no love or connection to the cosmic womb and therefore cannot utilize the law of attraction. So they use us humans to manifest by putting ideas in our faces. Once we see the idea and experience an emotion about the idea, we manifest it for them. So they don't tell us what they're going to do before they do it. They tell us what they want to happen and we make it happen by experiencing negative emotions about it happening. See them icons. Them icons. They, see them, they, you got certain people uh, out there that don't ain't like you. They ain't got a conscious like you. They can't make things come into play in this universe or in the in the physical plane. They can't. But they can manipulate you to do it. And they talk about, you know, people talk about in the Quran and different places. They talk about them spirits that dwell in those people. And you think, oh, everybody's the same. People, everybody's not the same walking around on this planet. Everybody is not the same. Everybody ain't trying to go to the source or to the light. They ain't. Some of them are comfortable being what they are. And you got to wake up, my people. You got to wake up now. It's wake up time now. The solo eclipse was to let you know that two years is coming and you could do it. And that's why I read in there when he said to uh, uh, Jonah in Nineveh, which is in Assyria, which is modern day America, which Jonah represent the prophet, the Messiah, the prince, the prophet that's supposed to be at our time. So that prophet have to translate it when he hear him say to Jonah, uh, his initiate say to Jonah, should we destroy Nineveh? Should we destroy, should I destroy Nineveh? Now we know Nineveh of the past was destroyed. It was in the nation of Assyria, not only Nineveh, but all Assyria was destroyed. So, and it was destroyed by civil unrest, civil war, and world war. And see, you got to see, but he didn't say, oh my. He said, should I? Now, should America, or could America be destroyed? Or should God destroy America by a civil war and a world war? It's left up to you. You're going to let the icons, you're going to let them dictate to you? By showing you a movie so you consciously could accept civil war, you could accept world war, are you going to take control of your own destiny and start seeing what's really going on around you? Because they done lied to you. People's everywhere telling you and showing you how they done lied to you. The Old Testament tell you about a dome 
And they tell you, well, ain't no dog. <laughs> they tell you a round earth. And they don't tell you a flat earth. And a lot of times I don't get into that. Because I got all this other stuff to lead you to safety. Because how they have Jesus said, if we don't cut time short, there will be no flesh saved. But for the let say, we must cut time short. That means that we got to worry about getting you through this, this Passover and through this Exodus. So that is not is significant. But don't think that I don't know what's going on. Don't think I don't hear what the pilots say when they say, when they ask them, interview them, is the earth round or, or, or what? And the pilots say a flat and the earth, the pilots say it's flat. You don't think I'm not listening to them. Don't think I'm not looking as I go on a flight on an airplane from, from uh, Jacksonville, Florida to Las Vegas or Jacksonville, Florida to Canada, Montreal, Canada, Jacksonville, Florida to Egypt to, to uh, uh, Switzerland and then from there to Egypt. Don't think I'm not looking out the window and seeing this stuff. And I ain't seen no curvature. So please, show me. But I don't want to get into that because that have no significance to you consciously coming from under this grip that America got you into. Black and white. And you got to see this. Let's move on now. Let's move on with this. Let's move on. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to read this here again and I'm going to move all the way on down on it. Exodus 3, 13 to 14. And Moses, which is Messiah, said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, mean the people, you know, no, no children, children. I ain't talking about no children, children. Talking about the people, I come to the people of Israel, the people of Lewis. Israel is stand for Lewis A.R. You got L-E, look at it now, L-E, you got L-E, the S, you make the W, L-E-W, and you got I-S, L-E-W-I-S, then you got A-R left over, capital A with the R that's telling you, giving you uh, the R to know it's talking about Louis Armstrong, that's who it is. Okay, and what did he say? How do you, why would you say Israel is a person instead of a nation? Because the scriptures say this, he said to Jacob, Now name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. As a prince, have thou power with God and with man. That's what the scripture showed you. So Israel ain't about no nation. Israel is about a person. Jerusalem is not about a city. Jerusalem is about a person. What did he say? Jerusalem into the Messiah, the Prince. So when you look at Jerusalem, and I say it's, uh, uh, Israel is Louis A., uh, uh, Louis Jerome Armstrong, then if I take Jerusalem, I must find Louis Jerome Armstrong in there. And if I don't find, you don't find Louis Jerome Armstrong, this Louis here is a liar. Come on now, let's be honest now. So I know what I'm dealing with, and I know what's going on. You got to be able to use the arts to see the truthism. Because things like tetraromaton, understanding the golden ratio, understanding the Felonici sequence, on understanding geometria, English geometria, understanding the numbers of the stars, understanding the, the uh, all the different arts that you're using. All the different arts. You need to understand this stuff. The possession of the equinox. You need to understand that. Anagrams. You need to understand that. Topographics. You need to understand that. See, if you ain't into all this stuff and knowing these arts, you can't translate this book. You sat there in La La Land trying to pretend somebody you're not. You need the real truth right now to lead God's people because you have powerful forces out there. Always remember, when Moses stole the rod down, Pharaoh man, men stole rods down too. Think about it now. But what was the difference between Pharaoh 
men's rod and Moses. Pharaoh men's rod did not come from thought the source. But rod, Moses rod came from thought the source. And that made the difference. Moses' rod came directly from the source. And that's the difference. And that's what you have to understand. And mine's coming directly from the source. Thought. Now let's go on down here because we're going to talk about thought right here. And he said, And I come unto the children, it said, When I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers, have sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? <laughs> that sounds just like black folk. <laughs> that sounds just like black folk. Oh, you okay, you tell me the God of my father. Ooh, what's his name? What's his name? I want to know his name. You tell me the God of my father. What's his name? Okay? Because they got all kind of names for God around him. So what's his name? Okay? And he's going to say this. What is his name? Okay. What shall I say unto them? Now this is what the Messiah would be saying. What shall I say unto them? Verse 14. And God said unto Moses, unto the messenger, I am thought. I am. Listen to what it's saying. I am thought. I am. It ain't no that. It's I am thought. I am. The God of your fathers, the one that God have brought and put here to educate mankind, to bring them into gnosis, into the true light, so they can return unto the Father. And they can return unto the course of spirit, soul, as they move unto the Father. And we have to understand this. I am thought I am. And he said, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. This is what time it is right now, my people. God wants you to return unto the fathers. As he said in Malachi, I will turn the hearts of the children unto the fathers and the hearts of the fathers unto the children unless I send a curse unto the earth. And that's what God want to do now. He wants you to be able to understand him before all this other stuff come. That's why that eclipse came and all the attention about the eclipse. It wasn't about no three days of darkness. It's about two days that you're going to get some hell if you don't get your act together and listen to what God got to say. We dealing with a Passover, my people. And you got to see this. That's the end of that. That's the end of this here lecture. We still need our 10 people with 100K and other. Please help this. We need this. We haven't had one person yet to come forth and handle this. And I know there's some peoples out there. So I would love at least one, two, three, four, five of them to step up to the plate to lead the way. Because it's, it's necessary. You can make your donation to Lewis Armstrong Ministry. Or you can make them to Cross Rock Incorporated. The address is 7536 Jane Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or you could go and make donations with Cross Rock Incorporated on Givelify on your mobile app on the charitable. That's Givelify on your mobile app on the charitable. And you can also go with PayPal at ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. That's PayPal, ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. Also, Cash App at dollar sign SWAU1954. Dollar sign SWAU1954. I'd like to say a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this, this time. Thank you for all that you have done. And I'm going to do my best, Lord, to follow your lead. 
so I could tell your children what's going to happen before it happens. Thank you for all the knowledge you have given me in the past. Thank you for giving me this avenue to talk to the masters of your peoples. And Heavenly Father, open the door even greater, even greater than it was in the beginning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for being there for us. I thank you for beginning to open the world to the fact that we are a chosen people. Heavenly Father, thank you.